Ever felt like VS Code could do more for you? Stick around, I'm about to turn your standard setup into a coding powerhouse. Hey everyone, I'm Jeremy. Welcome back to my VS Code series where I dive into the latest VS Code tools and techniques. Okay, let's get started. So one of the first things I do when I install VS Code is go install the extensions I need to make my job easier. This can be productivity boosters like live server, language specific aids for say JavaScript or C Sharp, and utility tools for help with spell checking or Git integrations. So to install an extension, we just come over to the left side and click on extensions. From here, we can see our installed extensions, popular extensions, and we can just search for an extension. I have several videos going over the best VS Code extensions. You can check those out in the description below. For demonstrating purposes, I'm just gonna search for a very popular extension called Git Lens. And here we can click on install, or we can click on the extension to view more details about it. Here we can see it's made by the Git Kraken team, how many installs it has, and the reviews for it. We can scroll down and read more about this extension. And then if we choose to install it, we can just click on install. I'm gonna do that now. Here we can see that this extension redirected us to a welcome page after it was installed. Not all extensions do this, but it is pretty nice when it does. If we come back to the extensions panel, and I'll remove the search, we can see that we now have Git Lens under our installed extensions. After you've installed a few extensions to make VS Code work better for you, it's time to change its look and feel. Changing your look and feel can improve aesthetics, but also enhance your code readability. There are two main parts to this, changing your theme and changing your font. So first, let's change our theme. We're gonna come over to the extensions panel, and the theme I'm wanting to install is called the GitHub theme. So I'm just gonna search for Git theme. And here we can see it's the first result and I'm just gonna click on install. After the extension's installed, we get a pop-up that allows us to set the new theme in VS Code. I'm just gonna choose GitHub Dark. Now let's change our icons. The icon theme I want to install is called Material Icon Theme. And here we can see it's the first result and I'm just gonna click on install. Just like before, once it's installed, we get a pop-up and we can set material icon theme as our icon theme. Now, if we open up some random code here, we can see that we have some nice icons for each file type. This can make looking for certain files a lot easier. I have videos on the best themes and icon themes if you're interested. You can check that out in the description below as well. Sometimes you may install a theme and you just wanna tweak it just a little bit. Well, this is easy in VS Code. We're just gonna open up our settings we can do that with command comma or control comma on Windows and then search for workbench space color. Here we can see that we have workbench color customizations and we can edit in the settings.json. We're just gonna click on that. And here we can see we have the option to customize a specific theme. I'm just gonna change the GitHub dark theme and we see that we get an object here and we're just going to create an empty string here and it gives us some suggestions. From this, we can just go through here and find all the options that we can customize. I'm gonna look for a sidebar and change the background color to red. I'm gonna save that. And we can see we now have an atrocious red in the sidebar. Now let's customize our editor font. You can go online and just search in Google for VS Code fonts or just coding fonts in general. One of the more popular ones is called Fira Code or at least something like that. We're just gonna scroll down and download that font. And then if we open up that zip file, we can look for TTF, select all of these, and open with font book. Now we'll just click on install, and we now have these fonts installed on our Mac. I should note this is instructions on specifically how to install fonts on a Mac, but you can just Google how to install it on Windows. Now that that font is installed on our system, we can just come back to VS Code and set that as our font. So we'll open up our settings with command comma or control comma on Windows and search for font. Here we see editor font family, and I'm just gonna add a new font to the front of this list, and it's gonna be Fira Code. And now if we open up a file with code in it, we can see our new font being used. Now that we've got VS Code looking a little better, let's optimize the workspace. There are five pieces to the VS Code interface. First is the activity bar. This is these icons on the left that allow you to switch your sidebar. And the second piece is the sidebar. This is what's changed out when you're changing your activity. Number three is the editor groups. Here we can see that I only have one file open, but if I open up a couple more files, we can see those files opened in tabs on the top. Number four is the panels. We don't see that right here, but if we open up the terminal with control, back tick, we can see that we have problems, output, debug console, terminal, ports, and git lens. And number five is the status bar. This is the bar on the very bottom. In VS Code, you can show or hide any of these pieces to make VS Code look exactly the way you want. 
So as it was before, I'll go ahead and close out the panels. I can resize the sidebar or just go ahead and hide it. I can also drag and drop the editor windows to lay out exactly the way I want. We can right click on the activity bar and hide things that we don't want to see. Look how clean that is. The same goes for the status bar, which unfortunately the pop-up goes outside the screen recording, but it looks just like it did on the activity bar. There's also a secondary sidebar that most people don't know about. We can enable it with Command Option B on a Mac or Control Option B on Windows. And here we can see it says drag a view here to display. I'm just gonna drag my search over to the secondary sidebar. And here we can see I now have the search on the secondary sidebar so that it's always open. I could also drag the source control over and put it on the bottom. Now we have the search on top and source control on the bottom. If you don't want a second sidebar, but you want your sidebar on the right, we can right click on the sidebar and say move primary sidebar right. And now we can see that the sidebar is on the right. Now let's talk about keyboard navigation and shortcuts. One of the easiest ways to improve your coding speed is to learn keyboard shortcuts. I use them all the time to improve my workflow and get things done quickly. So to customize your VS Code keyboard shortcuts, we're just gonna open up the command prompt with command shift P and search for keyboard shortcuts. And then we'll select preferences open keyboard shortcuts. And here we can see a list of all of the available commands in VS Code and its key binding. We also have conditions on when that key binding is active. So for example, if we hit Option, Command, Up Arrow, it'll add a cursor above, but only when we're in the editor text focus state. Let's say we want to change the key binding for accept inline completion. We're just gonna double click on that key binding and then press the desired key combination that we want for that. So as we can see, it was Control forward slash, and now I'm going to change it to control backslash, and then I'll press enter. Now we can see that if we hit control backslash, we will accept the inline completion. There is a lot of options in here. And if you're looking for something specific, I definitely recommend using the search. Before I get to my last tip, if you feel like I'm providing any value, consider hitting that like button so that others can find the video more easily. Also, if you're interested in seeing more videos like this, Consider subscribing. It would really help the channel out. And now on to our last tip. VS Code has code snippets built in. Using these code snippets can save you a lot of time when you're writing code. With the press of a few keys on the keyboard, you can instantly insert a block of code in your editor. There are many snippets already built in. So for example, in this JavaScript file, if I type in log, I can see that there's a snippet called log that will insert a console log into the editor. Also, if I type in four, I can see that I can insert a for loop, a for each loop, for in or for of. We're just gonna insert a for each. And now we can insert the array we want to loop over and name the element. These can be really helpful, but to really improve your VS Code workflow, you can create your own code snippets. So to do that, we're just gonna open up the command prompt. Again, that's command shift P or control shift P on a Windows. And we're gonna type in user snippets. And here we can see snippets, configure user snippets. Once we choose that, we have the option to choose the context for our snippet. We can also choose a global snippet, which would be available anytime in VS Code. For this example, I'm just gonna choose JavaScript. And here we get a JavaScript.json file open in the editor. We also see a commented out example. And I'm just gonna paste in my own snippet here. And we can see that I named it named function. The prefix is in func. We have the body of the snippet, which is what's gonna be inserted with three tab points and a description. Let's just go ahead and save that file. And I'll come back to this random JavaScript file and type in in func. And we can see now that we have our named function snippet. I'll hit enter. And we have the first tab point, my function. We'll hit tab. This is our parameters. So it's just gonna take my object and tab again to move the cursor to the inside of the function block. All right, if you've made it this far, I bet your VS Code is looking and feeling pretty slick now. Before you go, I've got something special for you. If you enjoy staying on top with the latest tools and techniques, you'll want to check out my weekly newsletter. The newsletter is brand new, and I'm excited to grow a community around it. You can check it out in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.